I'm going to go to the moon. And that is absolutely as ridiculous as it sounds, but I'm literally going to fly around the moon. I want to personally congratulate Tim for this exciting, amazing opportunity to be a future space traveler. I, st I genuinely still can't believe it. But I did ask him back in September when I interviewed him in Orlando what his thoughts were about going to the moon and Mars. Definitely no Mars. No Mars. No Mars. No Mars. I would, you know, this day and age, and this changed after seeing like DM2 and seeing Inspiration 4, like I will not, yeah, I would go to space now. You would go to space. Go I would go to space. Orbit. I would do Leo. Would you do uh, Dear Moon? I, that would be really hard. Like I would have to evaluate. Like if given that option, I would. You made a video for that. Right? Yeah, I made a video. You know, just sort of like casually thinking. Like obviously, there's no, there's no shot. And frankly, Dear Moon's been like radio silent, so I don't think anyone knows. At least I don't. And I would definitely have to like really strongly consider. You know, what are you do considering? I, want, I don't know the safety. The mm -hmm. the. Yeah. Do I do I want that? You know, like do I? You know, I, the good thing is one of my concerns back in the day, and I'm seeing it now, is not as big of a deal. But I was actually nervous back in the day that um, that you would be like totally recognized, you know, all the time. If you were, you know, going back to the moon, I would be so nervous that you'd be, you know, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong where they couldn't walk or go anywhere, do anything. But I just don't think that's the reality of it today. There's so many people that have flown to space, uh, even, you know, commercially and, and Inspiration4, you know, that still, uh, you know, they're just normal people and they don't get inundated by some space celebrityism, you know? So I don't think that would be an issue because I feel like these days people are like, oh yeah, people went to the moon, cool. You know, or like people went to space, who? Like, I feel like the biggest one for that was, um, was Axiom. Like, no one, like I, none of my family or anyone knew that there was a commercial crew going to, or not a commercial, but completely private crew going to the International Space Station. They just completely went up there with no fanfare and they definitely don't have to live with those like, yeah. you know, it's just become normal, it's become routine. And that's that's actually quite exciting to me, you know, is, is the idea of this all becoming uh, the next thing, you know. You don't think about flying and no one gets famous for riding in an airplane anymore. And <laughs> it's almost getting to the point now where people are no longer like, it's not a big deal to ride on a rocket, you know. Yeah. So he might have known that he was already in the running, but I forgive him for prevaricating. He says that he's already still pinching himself and can't believe that this is real and I'm sure I would feel the same way if I were him. Yusaku Maizawa is a Japanese billionaire and entrepreneur and he is behind this mission. Dear Moon was announced back in 2018 as SpaceX's first private moon mission and at the time the idea was to send a group of artists into space so that they could create works based on their experience. And now we know that not only billionaire Yusaku Maizawa will be on board, also a K pop musician and actor, many artists like Steve Aoki and our favorite everyday astronaut Tim Dodd. They will be flying around the moon, important to note there. And there was an open call for applicants back in 2021. So this has obviously been a long process and will likely have to wait even longer than the projected timeline for them to actually launch. But I really love the twist of having artists as a part of this experience instead of just professional NASA astronauts. No doubt their work and their research is valuable, but it will be cool to see the perspective of an artist, a musician, and someone like Tim Dodd, who actually reveals in his video that the Dear Moon project, when it was announced, was part of what inspired him to become everyday astronaut and start making videos. So. Wow, if that's not coming full circle, I don't know what is. Also keep in mind, there were over a million responses during that open call for spaceflight applicants in 2021. So no wonder it took so long to go through over a million applicants to pick only eight people selected for this mission. And the Dear Moon mission was slated to take off in 2023 on Starship, but we can probably pretty safely assume that that is going to be delayed. Of course, we want this mission to be as safe as possible and Starship still hasn't had its orbital launch. But I'm so excited that Tim at least now knows that he has a seat on that mission. I'm sure that there would be a lot of mental preparation involved with that journey. And I'm gonna put it out there. I will volunteer if Tim wants me to help cover his launch from Luna. So. You know, who knows when the launch will be, but if you need someone to help you with coverage from the ground, let me know. Yusaku already has some space experience under his belt. He visited the ISS after catching a ride in a Russian Soyuz spacecraft. This was in late 2021. But when Dear Moon gets off the ground, this will be a completely different kind of mission. There's just so much excitement for our return to the moon right now. It's been over 50 years and yes, we are due back. Of course, we know that Artemis finally launched last month, November 16th, almost exactly a month ago. 
and I will tell you, I haven't seen many rocket launches. I guess you could say I've seen one Falcon 9. I didn't see a Falcon Heavy, but I was there. It was foggy, but nothing compares to the visuals of seeing SLS launch. It was just incredible. If any of you have ever seen a total solar eclipse, I actually was in the band of totality in 2017. And uh, this was like a reverse experience of that, right? A total solar eclipse. It goes from daylight all the way to nighttime and then reverse. And Artemis was pitch black, nighttime sky to daytime as it was launching. And this launch really felt like it lasted for a while. So if you get a chance to go to Artemis 2, I would highly recommend it. Obviously launches are unpredictable and there could be some scrubs, but I'm so glad that I was able to witness this in person. And I'm just so excited for the Dear Moon mission. I will definitely try to be there, but you know, when that will be, We'll see. We're also celebrating right now, December 7th through the 19th, the Apollo 17 50th anniversary. Apollo 17, of course, was the final mission of NASA's Apollo program. It is the most recent time, 1972, that humans set foot on the moon or traveled beyond low Earth orbit. Commander Gene Cernan and Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt walked on the moon while Command Lunar Module Pilot Ronald Evans orbited above. And Harrison Schmidt was the only professional geologist to land on the moon. His selection was actually with NASA under pressure to send a scientist to the moon. The Apollo 17 mission broke several records for crewed spaceflight, including the longest crewed lunar lander mission. This was 12 days and 14 hours. But again, a big congratulations to Tim Dodd. I mean, who else has interviewed Elon Musk and toured Starbase personally? No one else to my knowledge. So how do you top that? I guess you go to the moon. We are excited for Tim. And if you didn't see my interview with him back in September, he is just such a likable guy. He even did a little acting with me. So I will link that. You can watch it here as well. But thank you so much for watching this video. So here's to celebrating our new space age. I'm honored to be a part of it. And I'm sure that 2023 will hold some pretty big things.